In this video, we're going to talk about object-oriented programming. The program that we have seen and written up until this point is actually of a different structure called procedural programming. This is where we written code line by line, step by step, and those commands are called in a sequence. For example, let's look at this. For example, let's look at this program that we have where a ball just bounces around the screen, right? You can see that even though we have se separated them into different functions here, they're being called one by one, one after another, right? These functions are called first, these functions are called second, and these functions are called third. And if you look at how it is structured, you have sets of variables, x and y, dx and dy, that indicates the location and then the speed and the direction of the circle, and then you have the functions that you would like to call in order for the ball to bounce around the screen. But if you actually take a closer look at this program, it is actually written in a way that is very similar to how you would structure an object-oriented program. What do I mean by that? If you really look at this, x and y sets the location of the circle. dx and dy sets the speed and the direction of the circle. And we have these three functions that draw a circle, move a circle, and check the boundary of that circle. So these are data, these are functions that are specific to an object, and that object is a circle. Under object-oriented programming, we emphasize an object as the main building block, and that object has its own data and functions specific to the object itself. Object-oriented programming is very suitable for a program where you simulate a world or an environment where there are various types of objects. We can store data and functionality of those objects within an object itself, making it very easy when you want to write a program where there are many types of objects that interact with each other. So we have here a circle that is an object. Let me give you another example. Imagine that you want to create a game, and this game is a game of a pet cat simulation. And there will be many types of cats, each with unique characteristics. These cats will have different pieces of information and behavior specific to the cat, but the type of data and the type of behaviors will be the same. Let's say I have two cats. The first cat is black, it weighs five kilos, and it is three years old. While the other cat is white, it weighs two kilos, and it is one year old. And these two cats have the same type of data, right? Color, weight, and age. And it also has the same set of behaviors. It can run, it can eat, and it can make sound. But the type of data and the type of behaviors that it can do may vary. The younger cat might run a little bit faster and eat a little bit more than the older cat. In summary, each object or each cat has different types of data and different behaviors. But the type of data and the type of behaviors that they possess are the same. Now, let's look at the syntax for writing object-oriented programming. An object-oriented program involves two main parts, a class and an object. Let's start with the class. To write a class is like to write a blueprint or a template. And in a class, you need to write the types of data and the types of functionalities that that object will have. Let's say for the cat example, within a class, the type of data that that cat object will have is color, age, and weight, while the functionalities that a cat object will have will be a function that it can run, that it can eat, and that it can make sound. The data within a class we call properties, while the function within a class we call method. Let's look at a class syntax. So first, we need a keyword, class, and then we need the name of that class, and then we have a curly bracket. Within the curly bracket, the first function that we're going to write is a very specific function called a constructor function. A constructor function is called when an object is created, and its main function is to provide initial sets of data and values to that object. The way that we would write a constructor function is by writing the word constructor and then a parentheses. So it's a little bit different from how we would write a regular function because a regular function, we need to set a keyword function, right? A function within the class, you don't need the word function anymore. You just write the name. And with a constructor function, you need to put the name constructor. 
Within the parentheses, just like writing a function, a constructed function can take in a value or like an argument, but it doesn't have to. And then you need a parentheses, and then you need a curly bracket, and then within that curly bracket, you basically create variables specific to the data that you would give to that object. The piece that I want to focus on here is the word this dot which is different from what we have seen before. So within a class, we need to write the word this dot and the word this dot is a keyword that is used to reference the data of that object within this class. You can think of it as like an ownership of that data belongs to that object. So whenever you use the data of that object within the class itself, you always need to write the word this dot, whether it's underneath the constructor function or if it's within the methods that you write underneath your class. The second piece here is the functionalities or the methods, right? The way that you write a method is like you write a function. And as I mentioned before, the function or method within a class, you don't need to write the keyword function. You can just write the name. And then you just write the commands that you want that function to include. And if you were to use any of the data specific to that object, you need to not forget to use the word this dot. So now I want to show you how to write an object-oriented program by turning this program that we already have that is written in procedural programming paradigm into object-oriented programming structure. So first of all, we want to write a class. So let's talk about where do we write a class. So actually, in this main sketch here, you can actually write your class within this section and you basically just write it underneath here. But usually people don't write it within the main sketch and that is because you might have so many classes within your program and your classes might be complicated and long the way that you want to do is that you want to create a separate javascript file and you can do that by clicking this arrow here create a file and then you just name your program i just name it ball.js and you click add file and before you start writing a class this is something that you need to remember to do. Right now, our program doesn't know that this JavaScript file exists. We need to connect it to our entire program. And you can do that by going to index.html page, and then scroll down here, and you see on line 13 here, just copy and paste this line underneath and change the name sketch to whatever you name your file. And this way, it's basically tell our program that, hey, please include this source file, bar.js, into our program. Now, let's go back to bar.js file. So first, you need to write the word class, and then you have to give it a name. I'm going to give it a name, ball, and then a curly bracket. We start by writing a constructor function. A constructor function, I'm going to have it have two parameters, x and y but there are going to be four pieces of data x and y dx and dy so i'm going to name it this dot x equals to x this dot y equals to y so when we create an object x and y arguments that are being input into here will be set to the this dot x variable and this dot y variable and then you want to create two more which is dx and I'm going to just set it to 2 and dy I'm going to set it to 3. Right now you see that I name the parameters to be the same as the name of the variables. It doesn't have to be the same but it can. And then after that I'm going to write three functions which are draw circle, move circle, and check boundary. Then draw circle is basically what? Fill the color 255, 255, which is yellow. And then I'm going to draw an ellipse. And within the ellipse function, as I said before, we need to make sure to not forget the word this dot, right? Because we want to draw the circle at location of this dot x and this dot y. So you can just do this dot x, this dot y, and then the size is 30. For move circle, what you want to do is the dot x equals to this dot x plus this dot dx, this dot y equals to this dot y plus this dot dy. And then within check boundary, we want to check if this dot x is more than width or not, or this dot x is less than zero, then we switch the 
direction. Same goes with y. This dot y is more than height, or this dot y is less than zero. Then we change the direction. Okay, so now we already created the class. Let's go back to our sketch. Now I'm gonna delete all of this. So what we want to do now is that we want to create a ball object. And to do that, you basically just like creating a variable. You just do the keyword let and then the name. But the constructor function, when you want to call the constructor function, you do it underneath the setup function. So I name it b, and b is equals to, this is how you create a new object. You put in the word new, you put in the name of that class, and then you have to give in the arguments that are required by that constructor function. So what are those arguments? X and Y, right? Let's say that I want to have it start at the middle of the canvas. Let's say I click play. Nothing happens yet because we just created an object, but we haven't called any function. Before I go to call the different functions, I want to show you how you can access the data within that object. You can do it by using the name of that object, the word dot, and then the data itself, which is x and y, right? x and y. Then if you click run, you can see that it's printing out x and y location of 200 and 200. And if you do b.dx and b.dy, you should get the values 2 and 3, which is what we had here. So this is how you access the data within an object. Okay, so once we have this, now we want to call the functions. We have three functions to call. And the way that you call a function is similar to the way that you access the data within an object. You want to tell the program that you want to call a function on that object. And you do that by putting the name of that object and dot and the name of the function. There you go. So now we have changed what we had before that was written in procedural programming paradigm into a new program that is now an object-oriented programming paradigm. What you see here might seem a little bit similar to what you have seen before, but the main difference here is that all the data and all the functions are being encapsulated within the object circle itself.